Oh, my biggest accomplishment. I, let me, let me give, give you some other history. My, that was my elementary, my, my high school. I played football, basketball, in fact, I had never seen a basketball. And my coach in my sophomore year said to me, Buford, I want you to be a point guard. I said, I don't know what you're talking about. A point guard, Bluford. I still don't know what you're talking about. And he says, he said, just a minute. He went into the locker room, come out with a basketball. He threw it at me very hard. I caught it out in front because I didn't know it was coming so fast. I didn't want to get hurt by it. I only weighed 120 pounds. And so I was protecting myself. He said, those are the hands I need. So he will be my point guard. And from that point, I played football at 120 pounds. My, our line averaged 230 pounds. The oddity of, this, of my growing up was that when the team traveled, if we were in town, I traveled on the bus with them. If we had to travel outside of South Sioux City, then I was taken in a private car with a family that was going to the game. Played football, but I was separate from the rest of the football team. Myself, Al Hayes, who became an attorney, Jackie Hall, who went into the military, got hit in the head with a latrine shovel and split his head open. He's never been the same since. And my brother and I. Yeah, when it came, when we were victorious, we didn't meet with the football team or the basketball team. We were taken to a little cafe and fed separate. And uh, this always, this always ha has haunted me all my life. My mind goes back to those days and I'm thankful that they're not quite as bad today. In, in high school class, my American literature class was where I took a stand and the teacher had called on me to read a, in the, one of the stories about niggers. And I said, I will not do it. Every time somebody wants to read about the black man, you're taking a call on me to read it. I will not do it anymore. It hurts. And the teacher says, do you realize that you will go from an A minus because you've been insubordinate? You'll go to a D? And I said, I can't help it. This is the way I feel. And this is what I'm not going to do. So I did, and I got the D. The principal couldn't do anything about it because they classified me as being insubordinate. Yes. Getting out of high school, the, the N word was always there. In my grade school, it was a little black sample. I graduated to the high school and the nigger. And so, yes, I remember very vividly. And your question to me now, after I've given you all that detail, is how did I feel? I still feel strange, because though we have laws on the books, and I've been active in NAACP up until they took on the position of the sexual orientation should be protected as we who are people of color. And I disagree with that. I disagree with it on two principles. The national office at first starting would not approve of it. Later on, they decided to go with it. Uh, Secondly, because as an ordained minister, I said no. Because if the Bible calls it abomination, and the people used to say to me, Blueford, this is only in the Old Testament. And I said, no, it's in the New as well. And uh, so for that reason, I took a stand on it. Even to the point of confronting the city council when they were pushing to get it adopted. After I listened to all, all of the people talking about it, I then took a stand and simply said, I asked the question of the council, and I'm not ashamed of it. I asked them, how many of you, of you are claiming to be Christian? And they all raised their hand, all of us. I said, then how can you sit here in front of me and tell me 
that sexual orientation, which is an abomination in the sight of God, only decorated with fancy words. And they said, These, this is the time and this is the law. And I said, I cannot go along with it. As a pastor, I have to stand where the Bible stands. And even though that's caused me some threats on my life, I still stand there. I will not sway from it. If it takes me to my grave, and that's what I've told the people that threaten me. If it takes me to my grave, I will go there. Rather than justify a sin which is an abomination in the sight of God. Yes. Wow, interesting stuff. Okay. Um, um, uh, what would you change, if you could? What would you change about the outcome of the segregation and integration? Yeah. That's hard to answer because though we thought in the, when we were being trained, some of the NAACP leaders were being trained, and we were trained in Devonport, Iowa because Sioux City was known for its violence. I, I remember of a gentleman who was an attorney who came to us on a Thursday night when we met. It's back in the, oh, that would have been in the late 50s. And he said to us, you need to know that I have been threatened. If I take a stand with you, that I am subject to be hung. This was a Thursday night. And on a Saturday morning, his body was found hanging down along the Missouri River in the trees. See, that riverfront used to be a line of trees. Y'all don't see that today. It's all riverfronts. You've got boats and all these kinds of things along the riverfront. But it used to be a line of trees from way up to the west, all the way down around to the, as you head toward uh, Omaha. That's been cleared out. But in among those trees, he was found hung because he took a stand. What is, what is different of, with the laws today? Thurgood Marshall, I, I'm acquainted with him because he taught classes on what, is, what we needed to be mindful of as a black man. He, Roy Wilkins both, and Samuel T. Jones came to Iowa to train us and what to expect when the policeman hit us across the shoulder blades. Because that's one of the locations. Across our shoulder blades, it leaves no scars. Across the middle of the kidney area and the lower back, they do not leave any major traces of, of beatings. And so we went through that kind of training to prepare us for it. And then people sitting as close as you and I are, spitting in one another's face. Yeah, that's what it was like. Today, we have the laws on the books that everybody's free. The question I asked back of Thurgood Marshall was, what kind of can of worms are we going to open up on, up on society when we get freedom for us? His answer to me was, that's not your worry. And I said, but Mr. Marshall, Along with freedom comes responsibility. He said, Bluford, that's not your worry. I said, then whose is it? I'm finding out as I've gotten older whose it is. It's ours still. It's all of society still. But you think the playing field is still level, don't you? 